Welcome to the USDA APHIS Veterinary Services presentation for USDA accredited veterinarians and a guide to issuing international export health certificates. In this video, you will gain an understanding of what health certificates are, the types of health certificates, and where to find them. You'll also learn the common parts of health certificates, as well as how to complete the health certificate. With that new knowledge, we'll review the common errors accredited veterinarians make when issuing health certificates that result in delays in USDA APHIS endorsing them, as well as reviewing helpful tips when completing fillable PDF health certificates. Finally, we'll remind you of your resources in the International Export of Live Animals, so that at the end of this presentation, you'll know how to successfully issue a health certificate. Health certificates are a uniform document used to capture information about an animal's movement to another country. They include the animal's identification, so it's clear that document corresponds to that animal, and that the animal is meeting the destination country's import regulations. It's important you remember health certificates are your legal documents, and as a USDA accredited veterinarian, you are regulated by the standards of conduct for accredited veterinarians, as found in 9 CFR 161.4, that dictates you must only issue a health certificate that is accurately and fully completed. If you need a refresher on your responsibilities, please watch the companion video to this presentation on an accredited veterinarian's role in the international export of animals. There are several types of health certificates. In years past, USDA APHIS had generic health certificates based on the type of animal for use with any country. These generic health certificates are the APHIS Form 7001 for small animals and non-human primates, as seen here, the VS Form 176 for poultry and their eggs, as seen here, the VS Form 17140 for livestock, as seen here, and the VS Form 17141 for aquatic animals, as seen here. In recent years, there's been a shift to health certificates that are specific to a certain type of animal for a certain country, which is tailored to the exact requirements for that animal to enter the destination country. These country-specific health certificates come in the forms of ones created by the country, like the European Union did for imports of dogs, cats, and ferrets, as seen here, or a USDA APHIS version that is tailored to the type of animal and destination country, such as with the health certificate seen here for pet dogs and cats to Colombia, or the VS Form 17145 for non-slaughter horses to Canada, as seen here. Given the many types of health certificates that exist, how will you know the health certificate you should issue? It'll be by checking the USDA APHIS pet travel website, also known as the PTW, or for non-pet movement, the USDA APHIS International Regulations for Live Animal Exports, also known as the IREGS, each time you prepare a patient for export. Countries who informed USDA APHIS of their import regulations through negotiations with USDA APHIS will have their requirements, including the required health certificate, available on our website. As we've discussed, despite the differences the format of a health certificate can take, all health certificates require the same documented information about an animal's movement to another country, unless they're comprised of the same or similar required fields. These required fields are the date of issue, which is the date the accredited veterinarian signs and dates the health certificate, the consigner, which is the name and address of the owner or exporter of the animal in the U.S., the consignee, which is the name and address of the owner or importer of the animal in the destination country, including identifying the destination country by name, the state of origin, which is the U.S. state or territory where the animal currently resides, the country of destination, which is the country the animal is being moved to, the place of origin, which is where the animal is currently residing and not where the animal was born, and the port of embarkation, which is where the animal is departing the U.S. from. Putting this all together, this is how a health certificate could be completed for a dog to Costa Rica. I'll wait while you take a moment to look this over. Moving along in our review of the required fields of a health certificate, most health certificates also need to include the date of shipment, 
which is when the animal will depart the U.S. and can generally be an estimated date, the means of transport, which is how the animal will move from the U.S. to the destination country, a description of the commodity, which describes the animal, a date of inspection, which is the date the USDA accredited veterinarian examined the animal before issuing the health certificate, and a total quantity to identify how many animals are covered by the health certificate. Let's take another moment to look at how these fields could be completed for a dog traveling to Costa Rica. The other fields that may be required to capture basic information about the animal's movement are the total number of packages, which is the number of shipping containers for transporting the animal or animals to the destination country, the identification or seal numbers, which are the seals used to close the aforementioned shipping container immediately prior to export, the commodity's intended use, which is how the animal will be used in the destination country, and the type of admission, which indicates whether the animal will be in the destination country temporarily or permanently. Continuing our example of a dog to Costa Rica, here's how these fields could be completed if they were required on the health certificate. The next type of required information that health certificates share in common is the identification of the commodity. These fields are extremely important since it allows the government official in the destination country to tie the health certificate you issued to the animal itself. The type of information used to identify the animal can vary from country to country and between species of animal, but regardless of how the destination country requires the animal to be identified, it is imperative you follow the requirements exactly as written. For countries who require supporting documentation in addition to the health certificate, such as rabies vaccination certificates and laboratory test reports, it is crucial for any information that identifies the animal on the health certificate to match the identifying information in the supporting documentation. For our dog to Costa Rica, here's how these required fields would need to be completed for her. Another very common section of required information is certification statements. Certification statements are attestations you need to make about the health status of the animal, as per the destination country's import regulations. For your convenience when issuing health certificates, many country-specific health certificates certification statements are pre-printed, so you do not need to write the required certification statements yourself. Regardless of whether or not the certification statements are pre-printed, you must carefully read through the statements to confirm they are true for the animal. If the statements are not true, you cannot issue the health certificate. Sometimes certification statements are either or statements to allow for different but equally acceptable health statuses, as seen here. If so, you need to watch for when a destination country requires the applicable statement to be selected, such as by a radio button selection of the applicable statement or lining out the non-applicable statement. Since certification statements are about the animal's health status, this is also generally where any required vaccinations, testing, or treatments are recorded. You'll record all the information required about any required vaccination, testing, or treatment, taking care not to include any information the section does not call for, and double-checking that the information you recorded on the health certificate about a vaccination or test matches the vaccination certificate or laboratory test report. This is also where some countries may require the date of vaccination, test, or treatment to be recorded in a specific date format. So watch for when that is required and ensure you consistently record all dates in the required format throughout the health certificate. If this were the certification statements required for our example dog traveling to Costa Rica, here's how the fields would be completed. Note how the dates are recorded in the required day, month, year format. The final required section that all health certificates share is the signature section. In order for a health certificate to be considered issued, the USDA accredited veterinarian must sign and print his, her name and date the health certificate with the day he, she is issuing the health certificate. 
Some health certificates may require additional information in the signature field, such as the accredited veterinarian's national accreditation number, but this information should not be included unless specifically required. For destination countries who require USDA APHIS to endorse the health certificate after it is issued by a USDA accredited veterinarian, you will see a field for the USDA APHIS veterinary medical officer's counter signature and endorsement. Here's how USDA accredited veterinarian Dr. Jane Smith would complete the final required fields to issue the health certificate. Notice that she did not enter any information in the signature block for the USDA veterinarian since that section must be left blank for the USDA APHIS veterinary medical officer's endorsement. Now that you've learned the parts of a health certificate, let's get into the details of how exactly to complete the health certificate. You may be wondering how you'll know which parts of the health certificate are required and must be completed by you. For most of the health certificates posted to the USDA APHIS PTW and IREGS, the PDFs of the health certificates are fillable, meaning any required field will have a fillable text box for you to complete, as seen here. Fields that do not require your completion, since they are not required, will not be fillable, and the fact that the fields should not be completed is made even more clear by asterisks and diagonal lineouts, such as in these examples here. For some health certificates, the information you need to provide may not fit in the allotted space. This is common for health certificates that require information in a table. When this happens, an acceptable method for clearly recording all required information is to complete the information that does fit in the first row, and then record the information that doesn't fit in the row immediately following it. In this example here, of a dog with two microchips, the first row is completed with the required information for each column. Since both microchips do not fit in the first row, the first row contains one of the microchips, and the row immediately beneath it is completed with the second microchip. Let's review a few other key points to keep in mind when you issue health certificates so you can avoid these common mistakes accredited veterinarians make and that result in problems for you and your clients. Most destination countries require the veterinarian issuing the health certificate to be a USDA accredited veterinarian. Since your accreditation must be renewed every three years and is state specific, each time you issue a health certificate, check that your accreditation is current and you are authorized to perform accredited work in the state you are practicing in. If you issue a health certificate requiring USDA APHIS endorsement after your accreditation has expired, USDA APHIS cannot endorse your health certificate. Similarly, if you issue a health certificate in a state you are not authorized to perform accredited work in, USDA APHIS cannot endorse your health certificate. Another common mistake accredited veterinarians make when issuing health certificates is using an outdated version of a health certificate. Destination countries can and do change their import regulations without notice and this is why it is imperative that you check the USDA APHIS PTW or IREGS each time you issue a health certificate, even if you just did so a week ago. If you didn't perform some of the work required to make an animal eligible to enter the destination country, it is still your responsibility as the USDA accredited veterinarian to verify the work. This is true even for such run-of-the-mill practices of veterinary medicine as rabies vaccinations. If you did not administer the rabies vaccination, it is still your responsibility to be knowledgeable about the vaccination if the destination country requires it. As we discussed at the outset of this presentation, it is your responsibility as an accredited veterinarian to only issue a health certificate that is accurately and fully completed. This means all required fields of a health certificate must be accurate and fully completed. You cannot leave any required fields blank, such as this accredited veterinarian did for a dog to Costa Rica. As we discussed earlier during the anatomy of health certificates, you should check that the animal's identification is recorded correctly and consistently throughout the health certificate. When the identification is present on supporting documentation, such as vaccination certificates and laboratory test reports, double check that the identification matches between the health certificate and supporting documentation. In this example seen here, 
There's a discrepancy in the dog's microchip ID between the health certificate and rabies vaccination certificate. Take a second to find the difference yourself. Did you find it? It's right here. And a mismatch like this could mean your USDA endorsement office refuses endorsement of your health certificate until the discrepancy is corrected. Similarly, vaccination and testing information recorded on the health certificate must match the corresponding vaccination certificate and laboratory test reports. Take another second to review this health certificate and the rabies vaccination certificate. Did you spot the problem? It's here in the manufacturer name, brand name, and lot number of the rabies vaccine. This mismatch would also result in the health certificate being rejected by your USDA endorsement office until you confirm the actual rabies vaccine administered and correct the erroneous document. Another commonly seen mistake accredited veterinarians make when issuing health certificates is the date of testing. Unless the health certificate otherwise specifies the date of testing is the date you collected the sample, not the day your laboratory received the sample, began the test, or concluded the test. For tuberculosis testing, the date of testing is the date the injection site was read, not the date the animal was injected. In this equine example here, the date to record in the health certificate for the required equine infectious anemia testing is the date the blood sample was drawn, not the dates the laboratory documented as having received the sample or reported the test result. Remember too, when issuing health certificates, that you cannot provide information beyond what is required by the destination country's import regulations. As seen in this example here, because the destination country does not require vaccination for distemper and feline leukemia, the accredited veterinarian should not have recorded this vaccination information for this cat. Superfluous information beyond that required by the destination country will result in your USDA endorsement office withholding endorsement of the health certificate until the non-required information is removed. Finally, when issuing health certificates, do not forget that if an animal is not meeting the destination country's requirements, the health certificate should not be issued. In this example seen here, the destination country requires the animal's microchip to have been implanted prior to rabies vaccination. Since the accredited veterinarian recorded the microchip as implanted after rabies vaccination, the health certificate would be refused endorsement by USDA APHIS because the animal is not meeting the import regulations. In summary, when issuing health certificates, remember, before issuing the health certificate, always check that your accreditation is current and you are authorized to perform accredited work in the state you are practicing in. Also, always check the USDA APHIS, PTW, or IREGS for the current version of the health certificate. If you did not perform the work, it is your responsibility as an accredited veterinarian to verify it. This includes rabies vaccinations administered by another clinic. All required sections of the health certificate must be complete, Check that the animal's identification is consistent throughout the health certificate and, when applicable, with supporting documentation, such as vaccination certificates and laboratory reports or test charts. Vaccination and testing information listed on the health certificate must match the corresponding supporting documentation. Always check your vaccination certificates and laboratory reports or test charts. Unless the health certificate otherwise specifies, the date of testing is the date you collected the sample, not the date the lab received your sample, began the test, or completed the test. For tuberculosis testing, the date of testing is the date of reading. Do not provide information beyond what is required, and do not issue a health certificate unless the animal is 100% compliant with the destination country's import regulations. The last information we want to impart to you when issuing health certificates is tips and tricks for successfully using PDF health certificates. When issuing paper health certificates you printed from the PTW or IREGS, the health certificates must be printed in their entirety. This means the margins and or other portions of the health certificate cannot have been cut off during the printing. 
and any text you typed into a fillable field must be visible, unlike in these two examples. If you experience issues with viewing, completing, or printing PDF health certificates, complete the following steps. Use Internet Explorer. The USDA APHIS website is most compatible with this internet browser. Save the PDF health certificate to your computer and open in Adobe Reader instead of completing within the browser. But remember, import regulations can and do change frequently and without notice. Don't get caught using an outdated version of a health certificate, so do not use previously saved versions of health certificates and always check the USDA APHIS PTW or IREGS when issuing a new health certificate. Make sure you're using the latest version of Adobe Reader. And when printing the health certificate, select Fit to Page under Page Sizing and Handling to ensure the printed page includes the title of the health certificate at the top of the page and page numbers at the bottom. USDA APHIS has numerous resources to assist USDA accredited veterinarians in successfully preparing their patients for export to another country. For the import regulations for other countries, please make note of the URL for the USDA APHIS PTW and USDA APHIS IREGS provided here. To view the companion video to this presentation on an accredited veterinarian's role in the international export of animals, the link to that video is available from the VHICS help page. Thank you for viewing this presentation on an accredited veterinarian's guide to issuing health certificates. If you have additional questions on how to issue health certificates, please contact the USDA Endorsement Office serving your state. Our contact information is available through the URL provided here.